All right, we're polishing combustion chambers today. Those of you that follow the channel know that all of my exhaust valves were badly bent in this head. So I actually went and got two new ones to destroy. Because what we're actually gonna be doing with these is up here, we're gonna be putting valves in these guides just to help protect our, uh, our valve seats. So we're gonna open these guys up. I normally have some assembly lube already on them. Okay. It's one. I already have a whole nother set of valves that have already been polished for this head. So, this is just to protect the seats. And I did keep three of the old ones so that these can protect the intake seats. Okay, now we know that our seats and our guides are safe and that, you know, we, we taped off the top to help minimize debris going down in there. Alright, and now, pretty much, I like using, you know, green painter's tape, works great. Um, some abrasive sanding rolls, Harbor Freight, I think these were about 23 bucks. Uh, it comes with three different uh, grits in there, awesome. Also, this four inch chuck, I got the extended one, so that when we go, comes time to pour it and polish these runners here, you know, we can get, get right down in there, all the way. All right, I started with the heavier grid on there. Let's start polishing. Okay, and you are going to have to switch rolls constantly because the tips do go go quick, especially on areas with lots of contours like these. So, just one quick tip I wanted to stick in here. When it comes in uh, down to getting into these corners, I found it very helpful. I took the valve itself. See how the outside edge is tapered? I put the valve in, the drill, in a drill and took my angle grinder at about 15 degrees and ran both of them to bevel that edge and that made it a lot easier to get the tapered rolls down in there. Alright and that concludes the first stage of porting the combustion chambers. Um, we want to take our time because we don't want to re remove too much material. Less is more in this sense. Uh, the more material you remove out of here uh, the lower your compression ratio is going to be. Uh, it's not too much of an issue on this engine for this build because I am uh, anticipating high boost levels. Um, but basically, uh, we're, we're done using this for now. Uh, and we're going to switch to using sandpaper. Now I got some 220 grit. You guys might notice that, get the focus, paper's not squared. And the reason for that is I like to roll them into tapered rolls here. Because it just helps you work down into the crevices. You know, and get into those hard to reach areas to get those casting imperfections where the, you know, the pointed rolls couldn't get. Uh, and furthermore, it also allows your sandpaper to last a little bit longer. Because, hold on. Let me unwrap this. Once the paper dulls from it being rolled up and it's not really sanding anymore, Let's see, you see that? All the paper is still good. We literally cut like an eighth of an inch off of the edge and roll it right back up. And like I said, it's just a bunch of 
It's just patience. And I know none of you really want to see another five, ten hours of sanding, so I'll go right to the afters here for you. There's the shine. And I really just hand sanded with little rolls and little squares. And once I got up past 3,000, I switched over to the Dremel with uh, the polishing bits and uh, used some uh, Mother's Metal Polish. All right, I did go. Uh, the only one that's really not here is uh, the 600. Uh, <clears throat> I did use 600. It's just not here. Uh, the 223, 2400, literally all the way up to 3000. And then that's when we finalize it with the Dremel and go around in all the little nooks and crannies. As you guys can tell, it came out great. All four. All right. See you next time. Stay tuned. Like, share, and follow.